Uh, thanks, Marilee, for the introduction, and thanks uh, to all of those of you who are attending this webinar. Uh, I'm going to start off the program by providing some background and context for what we're talking about today. And then my Cornell colleague, uh, Francis Webb, will talk about uh, what we did and how we did it, which I believe will be the more interesting part of the program. Uh, we'll conclude our presentation with ideas for further development regarding work ideas that we'd like to see. And we're planning to leave a generous amount of time for Q&A and comments, which is merrily um, remarked we will uh, address at the end. First of all, for those of you who don't know what OCLC work IDs are, or aren't familiar with this concept, work IDs, uh, an OCLC work ID is a unique identifier associated with a work that appears in WorldCat. And I'm using work here in a Ferber-like sense. Um, it's related to the Ferber work, but is not exactly parallel. Uh, more specifically, and I'm drawing on OCLC's definition here from their OCLC work ID webpage. Work IDs point to high level descriptions of a resource containing information such as author, title, descriptions, subjects, and so forth, common to all editions of the work. And I think the word editions here is key to understanding the scope of the work ID. Work ID does not point to all work, uh, all represent, all let's see, expressions and manifestations of the work uh, in all formats, but all editions of the work in basically one format or formats very much related to that uh, format. And let me give a commonly cited example of Shakespeare's Hamlet, which is a bit of a dangerous example because it's so complicated at times. But we understand Shakespeare's Hamlet is a play that was uh, the first created around the turn of the 16th to 17th century. Uh, it has survived in written form. There are a lot of uh, editions of that written work. There are a lot of translations of the written work. There are electronic copies. There are probably microfilm copies. But there are also other formats, such as uh, theatrical productions, uh, DVDs, uh, and, and music, and so forth. Uh, what we're talking about in terms of the work, as we understand the OCLC work ID, is all of the stuff related to that print format. Um, in linked open data terms, for those familiar with uh, linked data vocabularies, work entities are based on properties defined by the type creative work in schema.org. So if you're familiar with schema.org, we're talking about properties related to creative, uh, creative work. Now, how and why did Cornell come to acquire these IDs uh, for use in our discovery system? It's our understanding that OCLC Research originally created these, uh, this concept and the algorithm that produces it in conjunction with their uh, research and development priorities. Um, the availability of these identifiers for Cornell actually originated in a request from Stanford University Library to OCLC about three years ago. And what Stanford wanted was a kind of concordance of OCLC system numbers, that is the WorldCat record numbers, uh, associated with their experimental work IDs. And now Stanford, Stanford's goal, as we understand it, and there may be somebody from Stanford um, in this webinar who might want to expand on this uh, later, but Stanford's goal was to use these IDs as part of their transition from MARC to a linked data environment, uh, and a linked data environment in which unique identifiers for various entities will be paramount. Um, on the heels of Stanford's request, Cornell asked for the concordance as well, not only in preparation for future development of our own linked open data environment, but potentially for more immediate use even with MARC, to enhance discovery. Specifically, we wanted to provide linkage among various editions of works in our current Blacklight discovery system, something we could do now and uh, not necessarily have to wait for a linked data environment. OCLC generously provided us with this file in late 2014, 
And this is the file which ended up in Francis, Francis Webb's hands. And I will turn it over to Francis now to uh, talk about what she did with these IDs. Okay, thank you. Um, before we acquired the OCLC work ID compendium, we had wanted to link between catalog records for the same work, but our initial research showed this to be a very significant undertaking. Connecting our records based on bibliographic description risked many false matches unless applied strictly and missed too many matches even when applied loosely. The OCLC numbers in our records were too granular for the kind of record connections we wanted. In this example, a recent edition of a book is connected in the other forms of this workbox on the right hand with an earlier English edition, an Italian translation, and the original French. The titles don't quite match, and all four have different OCLC numbers. The connections here are a product of our inclusion of the OCLC work. The OCLC work compendium, and we're currently using a copy of the compendium from the fall of 2015, was delivered to us as a 365 million line text file, each line connecting OCLC record IDs to OCLC works. Importing the data was as simple as loading it all into a database with indexing by both numbers for quick cross-referencing. In the example shown on the right, the work 4764 represents the question from the previous slide. The four OCLC record IDs beneath it represent the four editions of the title we have, while the compendium associates 109 other OCLC record IDs with the work, which are not present in our catalog records. Our library catalog is in an ex libris Voyager system, and our public catalog interface uses a blacklight UI, which depends on a solar search engine. Before adding OCLC works to the mix, we had a process that pulled our records from Voyager and processed them into the solar search index. To integrate what we could about works, we incorporated the new data into the existing indexing process. As each record is processed into the search index, the OCLC record ID from our record is now used to identify that record's work number. In addition, our database of works also retains the association of the OCLC record ID with the particular local record as represented here by the little orange book. As this process continues, our database associating work with OCLC record IDs then with our own records grows. Our local records have their own record numbers, but I'm using color coding to separate one from another so to avoid a third set of numerical identifiers in this illustration. When we see a record whose OCLC ID is associated with the same work as another record, then that information can also be supplied to the solar search engine. That allows the public interface to have immediate access to information about connected records. Sometimes we find multiple local records with the same OCLC record ID. While we treat these connections between records the same way, regardless, these are connections we could have made using the OCLC numbers alone and without the work ID compendium. There are approximately 100,000 such connections between pairs of records we could make using OCLC record IDs while the addition of the works compendium allows us to make nearly 1 million more, meaning that 91% of the other forms links we're able to display are a direct result of our use of the work IDs. As this process continues, we end up with a detailed database associating our records with OCLC records and works. Maintaining this database as our records are created, modified, and deleted becomes a vital component to keeping our other forms of this work links reliable. Connecting editions is another important use, as when finding a record for the fourth edition of this textbook, a patron can see that the library holds several editions, including two instructor's editions and one more recent edition. Oh, I, oh I'm sorry. I, that was wrong slide. <laughs> this example shows a major use case for other form linking. Um, when finding a record for the print title, patrons want to see if we have an online copy. This is a good example as the print copy is located in, our li located in our library annex and will not be available the same day, but the online edition can likely be accessed immediately. 
And this is the example of the, um, the textbook with its several editions. This musical score is checked out, and the other forms of this work feature may help a patron find an available copy without having to resort to attempting to recall the copy associated with the record they first found. One of the uses in most heavy demand, from faculty in particular, is the ability to connect print with online journal holdings. This example is a good one because looking here at the record for Cornell's print holdings of the journal, you can see a note in the availability box on the top right that our print subscription was canceled in 2003 in favor of an online only subscription. Conversely, a patron looking at the record of the online holdings linked to in the other forms of this works box might find themselves tracking back to print holdings as the online holdings don't go back further than 2000. I haven't drawn attention to it yet, but at the bottom of every other forms of this work box, you can see a link labeled, see all forms of this work. This isn't very important when we only have two records for a work, but when we have dozens or hundreds of records, this is important as it performs a catalog search for the OCLC work. Clicking that link brings us back to our standard search result panel. I'm showing a different example work here, looking at a work for which the library has enough different copies to make an itemized list in the other forms of this work box unwieldy. Instead, by going back to a search results screen, the various copies can be filtered using the search facets on the left as applicable. Do I want to copy in a particular language, in print or online? If I prefer to read a print book, this can be a good way to find one at a library location nearby or to learn more about the copies that have been stored in rare and manuscript collections. The Cornell Library Discovery and Access team is engaged in ongoing development of features of our public catalog. As the OCLC work service grows and evolves, we're eager to see how we can incorporate any new capabilities into what is already a very important record linking feature in our catalog. Thanks, Francis. Uh, we want to conclude with some additional use cases and some ideas for further development of um, work IDs. <clears throat> um, one example, um, we see that these can be very useful in the discovery of other editions and conceivably formats at other institutions, for instance, within resource sharing consortium. Um, as many of you know, Cornell is part of the ID Plus uh, Bar Direct resource sharing group. Uh, there's some other large groups you may be familiar with, TRLN, Big Ten, I believe, has a group. Um, and there are, uh, of course, many other uh, consortial relationships for interlibrary loan. Um, speaking for the IB Plus Bar Direct group, at the moment we're looking into the idea of creating a shared index of IB Plus holdings. Uh, to enhance discovery for uh, resource sharing. You can imagine with the embedding of or the use of work IDs among all 13 libraries in this shared index, then we could provide a service for users that not only shows the availability of a known item, but the availability of uh, related editions of that known item if the known item or the uh, the specific desired item is not available for circulation among any of the libraries. There would be alternatives if somebody is not too concerned about addition. Perhaps more importantly, uh, the availability of electronic editions uh, could also be displayed in this way. <clears throat> the discovery of digital editions, uh, excuse me, digital editions in Hadi Trust. I just touched on this with regard to resource sharing. Uh, we can imagine, for instance, that the work IDs uh, uh, appear in WorldCat, they appear in local databases, and they also appear in Heidi Trust. If uh, a user of a local um, database, for instance, a local discovery system, finds that a print edition or uh, some physical edition is not available, or simply prefers the digital edition, uh, the Heidi Trust, uh, we could create a link with Heidi Trust to um, provide a link to that digital edition. 
Propagation of work level data from the work ID to expressions and manifestations in place of cataloger created authority records. Uh, this is probably a bit more forward looking uh, than the previous two use cases. And it probably has a greater effect on um, um, back end usability rather than front end discovery. Some of you are familiar with a recent white paper on faceted vocabularies from the ELEX CAMS uh, Subject Analysis Committee. In fact, we may have some authors of that paper uh, present in this discussion. That paper recommends the expanded use of work slash expression authority records to record subject, form, and genre data. We'd like to see the use of OCLC's machine ed uh, aided generation of entities expanded beyond um, uh, beyond where it is now as a possible alternative to this uh, NACO solution. Uh, what is at stake here for us is efficiency. Although we certainly want to provide as much bibliographic context as possible to users, and um, certainly the, the proliferation of bibliographic data and context uh, uh, in its current form allows us to do that. Providing access to an entire database or entire database of library holdings is a kind of zero-sum game. That is, um, in a large-scale operation where we're trying to provide access to many, many new and existing titles. Uh, annually, we may not be able to provide the kind of level of access to all of the titles that we would like to provide. The more we can do through linkage and unique identifiers, the more that can be automated, uh, the more access we can ultimately provide for the users. So we think that um, pursuing unique identifier solutions, or dollar zero solutions as some people have been calling them, is certainly a path we want to go down and work IDs uh, give us an opening onto that path. I've already mentioned support from Mark to RDF, uh, support for Mark to RDF linked data conversion. This will be much, much easier to do using uh, identifiers rather than um, text strings. So the more um, IDs we can embed in our Mark data now, the easier it will be to convert. Integration of work IDs into OCLC production services. Um, I'm moving away now from uh, use cases to ideas for further development. <clears throat> it would be great to embed work IDs whenever available into a standard MARC field. Uh, it's my understanding that MARC proposal 2017-09 for defining field 758 has been approved by the, um, by the MARC folks, or the, uh, yes, the MARC folks. It would be, uh, I would expect that the 758, which once implicate, uh, implemented, could be, uh, could be uh, converted to good frame as well to accommodate linked data. Having um, work IDs in a consistent place where we can find them and into which we can propagate the identifiers will obviously be advantageous. Um, it would be great to have the work IDs in WorldCat um, refreshed to incorporate new and changed data. Currently, as Francis mentioned, we're working with a, an update with, with a file from um, 2015, a compendium from 2015. We have not received or been able to get updates since. It would be great to have even a monthly um, uh, file of new and updated data. Um, uh, as well as allowing member libraries to request changes or edit work entity uh, data directly. Uh, first of all, just the refreshment uh, and the addition of new work IDs uh, would already go a long way uh, to allow us to, to work in a more dynamic environment. Allowing member libraries to request or edit the data directly would be a step even further. Um, uh, I haven't cataloged in many years, but it's my understanding uh, that uh, these days in the FAST database, uh, in the FAST database, on the FAST database search screen, there's a radio button. 
that allows catalogers to make uh, corrections or suggestions to corrections or additional uh, forms for fast headings. Uh, it would be great to have something like that for OCLC work IDs if those work IDs were further uh, developed. Um, it would be um, nice to be able to re request uh, annotations of relationships between elements um, of the work. Direct access to the database would be even better in a more collaborative uh, environment. We certainly understand that OCLC is responsible for the integrity of WorldCat and its ancillary files, so we can understand any hesitation about letting member libraries get into those files. But we do have uh, the enhanced program uh, that was initiated many years ago that allowed uh, libraries with certain uh, clearance and with certain controls to go in and make corrections to the WorldCat master records. It would be good to have some kind of system, some kind of organization like that. If we can, if OCLC is willing to bring work IDs far enough along that we can use them more dynamically. Just an idea. That completes the prepared part of our presentation. We'd be happy to entertain questions and comments. Thank you so much. And indeed, there are there are a number um, of questions. I'm trying to uh, to keep track and to uh, sort them um, in a way that that makes sense. So there are um, there are questions about uh, about updates to um, to work IDs uh, in uh, in your experience. Uh, what has been um, the uh, so you said that you uh, got a refreshed version of of the data. What are your insights into how the data um, how the data is updated, um, and uh, what the what the potential is for for getting um, updates back into the data set? We are still using the 2015. I'm model. sorry. I don't believe okay. we got any updates, Francis. No, um, the, the the two files that we got, one in 2014 and one in 2015, um, I believe were generated and sent to us by OCLC very manually. Um, so we would be looking for a some form of automated um, update summary or even an automated generation of the entire compendium at, at broader intervals if that was um, what could be managed. Right. It's our understanding that the work IDs is not really production level process for mm -hmm. yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Jackie uh, Shea comments, um, it's my understanding that the OCLC work IDs are not stable and not advisable to deploy in large scale. Is that still the case? Um, and I know that I have, there are a number of OCLC colleagues um, on. Uh, it would be helpful uh, if uh, if you guys could uh, could pop in and, and help answer some of the questions about um, production and scale. So understanding that this is very much uh, what Cornell is presenting is very much um, in the spirit of uh, the works in progress um, series that that what you have done is uh, is uh, impressive but um, experimental um, and and it's experimental on both sides on the on the OCLC side as well as on the um, on the Cornell side. Uh, let's see. There is a question um, here from so Stephen Hearn has a, a couple of questions that I think I can uh, pitch to Cornell. Um, so, does does the works data express connections between works, e.g., whole part relations, two towers and Lord of the Rings both being works? Um, uh, how does that how does that kind of thing play out in the in the data set that you have? So, at present, we don't have that kind of relationship, and um, that would certainly be an an enhancement that we'd be interested in. Right now, because each of our records only has one OCLC record number, um, it can then only be associated with one work. I think that what would be very nice to see in future development would be um, relationships that could be established between work IDs to say this, this work contains that work or this work 
um, is derived from that work. This, this is the film adaptation of this work. Um, all of those relationships would be very, very interesting to our patrons. Um, but that's, I think, a, a future hope. Yeah, and not encompassed in the current uh, implementation. Um, Stephen has another question. Are there, uh, as you observe, are there any formats that are less well managed in the OCLC Works database? So, for example, in his system, uh, they have trouble ferberizing maps. So, uh, uh, formats for which the um, the work IDs yeah. don't work so well. We looked at maps. We haven't done any formal analysis of the of the quality of the linking. It's been very anecdotal. Um, so far, um, I think we've had in the last two years two examples of um, false positive connections between records, um, and most of the, the the thing, most of what people would like would be to see stronger linking. Um, I think that I can understand that maps would be um, a particular challenge, and I I don't know um, how well they're currently served. Okay. Yes, you know, one of the things that we haven't done yet, and probably should, but there are a lot of good ideas we have that we would pursue, is to get some kind of formal study in, um, in how this feature which appears in the uh, in the uh, in the in the uh, discovery system as other forms of the work, how this feature is being received and used by patrons. We don't have any formal data, but we have some anecdotal data from our reference librarians who indicate that this feature is being heavily used, is well liked, and something that the users would miss a lot if it went away. It would be nice to have and. Uh, we don't, but it would be nice to have something more granular than that in terms of what specific examples of the features people are uh, getting excited about and what, if any, problems they're encountering. But we simply haven't gone that far yet. And it's great to get that kind of uh, feedback. Sorry, you were going to say something, Francis. Um, no, not not really. I think that this is this is just an uh, an ongoing. Exploration. It's it's very hard to get to compile this kind of um, feedback because every experience is so different, and um, a lot of times people will have a positive experience where the other forms feature might help them. They might not know that there there might be a link that could have been there that might have helped them. Um, so it's hard to to get authoritative. Um, uh, reporting on this kind of thing. Um, so I think that what we can do and um, and probably ought to spend time on as well is uh, more data analysis um, where we can try to form um, a better numerical picture of what links we think ought to be there. Um, and what percentage of them actually are. Okay, great. Um, here is a question. Uh, can you talk about how the new IDs go from the MySQL database and get merged into Solar Blacklight? Um, or how the work IDs, yeah. Sure. That's, um, so, the, the process that pushes the, the documents into the solar index um, has to do a lot of munging on the bibliographic records already. Um, and what it does is to connect to that database, find the work ID, and simply add it to a field in the document that's going into solar. Um, if, if we had that work ID in the bibliographic record in the first place, then we might be able to avoid that step. Thank you. Um, so uh, Roy Tennant, thank you, Roy, uh, makes a comment. Work IDs are still definitely experimental and cannot be relied upon for production services. However, it is just such experiments as Cornell that is providing us with the kind of feedback 
we need should we take this into production. So, so thank you so much to uh, to to Cornell for for undertaking this um, important important experience and ex experiment and experience. <laughs> um, uh, and hopefully that answers some of the questions. There have been questions about. Um, how do updates happen? How do uh, how do I get to work IDs for for my own um, system? So hopefully that that helps to answer um, some of those questions. Uh, let's see, just picking through some of the questions here. Go, go ahead. Um, so one of our catalogers who's um, attending um, sent us a private message to let us know that our catalogers have been finding that the work ID mapping is strongest for formats and editions um, and not as strong for translations. Thank you. Thank you to the Cornell remote team <laughs> for, for helping to field questions and give additional commentary. So, Marilee, this is kind of a technical question. If something shows up on our screen saying, Privately, does that mean that only Francis and I can see it, or can you see it too? No, I can't see it. Okay, That's, those good. are Thanks. those are things that that only you can see. Um, I can see it if it says to uh, to host and uh, presenters. So, no, those are things that only you can see. So, if you're getting um, additional questions um, that you think the audience would uh, benefit benefit from uh, commentary on, uh, please please feel free to field those. But, but I can't I can't read those to you. Um, let's see. So there's there's also a lot of back and forth with people answering one another's questions in the chat. Um, uh, has there been an analysis of OCLC work IDs to see how they fit in with linked data models? Um, such as RDA, RDF, and BibFrame. Um, and RDA, R, RDF, RDA, RDF, WEMI, and BibFrame work instance item. Um, uh, is that anything that you guys have uh, looked at? No, we haven't. Um, we'd be interested to hear if anybody, I don't know, maybe if Beecher is out there or somebody from LC, if if there's been any thinking about this regarding bib frame or if uh, work IDs are not even on LC's scope at the moment. But, 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 but we have not except uh, insofar as identifying the mark field as a home for uh, work IDs, we would imagine that mark field could then be uh, added to the mappings for convergence to various um, uh, Linked data ontologies. If okay. we can agree on the mark field, would then the conversion would be consistent? Right. Um, here is another question I think could be for one of my uh, OCLC colleagues, and I believe that the answer would be no. Are any links links being made from the OCLC work ID database and the NACO authority file? Um, if I'm if I'm wrong in asserting that that is in, in that that is not happening, please uh, please speak up. Um, let's see. Uh, Karen Smith Yoshimura says OCLC research is working on establishing relationships between translations and original works and expansion of the small research data set that we generated for a workshop in Leiden in the Netherlands that, um, that she talked about at ALA annual. Uh, so, uh, we are continuing to, um, uh, talk about, uh, relationships of uh, works, the the types of things that uh, that Francis said uh, would be interesting. So other other connections between um, other other types of works that are uh, particularly useful um, in an end user uh, setting. Um, let's see. Uh, Jean Godby pitches in. We did a high level analysis and reported it at the bid frame update session in June 2000. 17, this analysis is expanded on in the draft PCC LDAC white paper on works. Uh, so it sounds like perhaps we should uh, bundle up pointers to some of these presentations and include them uh, with the 
um, uh, with the uh, uh, links to the recording that we'll send out afterwards. And thank you to Eric for um, providing a link to Karen Smith Yoshimura's uh, paper about OCLC translations um, at the uh, Dublin Core uh, Metadata Initiative meeting uh, just just a couple just last month. Um, or in October, I guess. Uh, let's see. Kind of scanning for other questions that we should pitch your way. Um, I am not seeing other questions or comments. Um, aha! Okay, Stephen. Thank you, Stephen. We can always rely on you for some questions. Looking ahead to work descriptions being integrated into search environments, is that a goal for Cornell? Um, so, um, and I would say yes, absolutely. And we already do use um, some of the bibliographic description that we find in. NACO authority, as limited as that is, um, and we are certainly happy to be able to to supply other information. Right now, um, in our in our work ID searches, the, the searches are not particularly. Um, um, so right now, the search that's happened in this in in this slide is a work search for a four-digit number, um, and that's not particularly user-friendly. I think if we had more information about the work, we could present it far, far more nicely. Um, and so because of the, the NACO authority um, author title uh, records are based, are connected to the bibs currently anyway based on string match, um, when we do a search of the catalog for one of those, um, the, the, the search looks much nicer to the patron because they see that string match. Um, and as we shift to using more ID-based authority linking, uh, we would want to, to maintain that, that UI um, pleasantness. Um, and I think that there's a lot where having a little bit of information about what work we think we searched for um, would be nice. Yeah, um, and uh, I like that uh, UI, UI, what, what did you say, UI, uh, UI niceness? <laughs> yeah, UI pleasantness, exactly. Um, Stephen's question had two parts. Uh, the second was, for OCLC, can a user-friendly work description be derived from all the data aggregated in Bib records representing the work? Um, and gives an example of, um, of a, of a non-user-friendly uh, um, example, uh, but but which which could be made more so. And I would say to that, I'm sure that other colleagues from um, OCLC research have have other responses to that. But I would say that this experiment from Cornell and others like it really help us to see where where some of the possibilities may be that it's a um, implementation of works in a in a real life setting um, and potentially against real users that will that will help us uh, with that. And there are so many um, different kind of takes on works, as I think this uh, presentation today and also discussion helped to reveal um, that uh, what the works are not um, all uniform in, in terms of the, the gaze of the, uh, the user. So I think the, the more um, kind of implementations like this that we can, that we can see uh, out, out in the real world, the, the better. Um, uh, Adam Schiff observes perhaps the uh, 024 identifiers and work authorities could be useful to link to additional data, for example, um, Wikipedia or Wikidata. I would um, I would uh, also also include in there, which could lead back to uh, additional um, Wikipedia uh, pages, including uh, uh, pages in other languages, which could be uh, pulling some some additional useful information. Um, and I, I'd also note that a lot of the Wikipedia articles, and I don't know what percentage or how complete it is, but a lot of the Wikipedia articles also contain the NACO identifiers. 
so they can be connected that way as well. Yep. Yeah. And um, and uh, Karen and I are actually uh, planning a uh, at least one um, session, uh, kind of an orientation session to Wikidata for next year. So uh, stay tuned to that. We'll be uh, bringing you more information on Wikidata, Wikipedia, and the connections between the two. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see, there was a question from Jackie Shi asking uh, whether Jim's reference to NACO was to author title records. Um, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were talking about the works as an alternative to NACO, so it sounds like it. it yes, I believe it was author title, but I, 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 I do not have the citation in front of me, so I'm, that's why I'm a little hesitate, hesitant to answer. Okay, great. Um, thank you, Adam, for providing the link to the paper that addressed faceted vocabulary on subject analysis. Uh, that's, that's the one. Thank you, Adam. Okay. Okay. Looking uh, I for... Have, uh, I have yeah, a question. Yeah, please. Yeah. Um, um, one of the things that I think is important in a lot of our speculation, and, and, and I, I appreciate um, I appreciate the remarks about the experimental work we're doing with the work IGs, and I, we're thankful to OCLC for giving them to us. Um, input from the front end, such as I cited earlier, even anecdotal about the four other forms of the work feature being heavily used and so forth, I think is very useful for telling us that we're on the right track. And I think it's important, and I mean, I think it's important for Cornell to do more of this too. Did we do more experimental work, not just for ourselves, but actually showing it to somebody who can actually try to use it um, in production? I know we often speculate about what would be good, for instance, connections to Wikipedia, uh, connections to Wikidata. It would be good for the user if we could do X, Y, or Z. But I think an actual practice, or I suspect an actual practice, that some of these use cases would be more useful than others uh, to front end users. And I think as we are doing this experimentation, and I know this is happening with the LD4 projects as well, as we do more and more of this experimentation, as soon as we can get something out that we can have real live users evaluating and commenting on, I think that would help guide us in terms of areas of focus, where we want to spend our time. It could be the work IDs are not as important as um, um, uh, person entities, for instance. Or mm -hmm. it may not be a question of importance, but one seems to provide more bang for its buck than the other. And the more information we can get from the front end in terms of our mapping our strategies for better discovery, the better. Agreed. Thank you for that. Um, let's see, here's a comment. While this is getting further out ahead, I wonder about the creation of work IDs as an associated process when metadata practitioners are creating person IDs, such as ISNI, list a work as an entity attribute. Um, so kind of incorporating uh, IDs into, um, uh, into the creation of using existing IDs to fold into the creation of other identifiers, I guess, is kind of supporting information. I'd like to agree with the comment that Jackie Shea just posted to, uh, in response to, to Michelle DeRoche's comment. I, I think this kind of experimentation opens the door to all kinds of links between the experimentations. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, and, and although it's looking ahead, I think it's very, it's a quite exciting in terms of encouraging us to continue the experimentation. Yes. Okay. Um, and here is another, uh, another link to um, a presentation on subjects and authority records. Thank you, Adam, for uh, providing being a, a most excellent uh, distributor of, um, of, of links today. As, as part of the session. Um, 
Unfortunately, this format doesn't doesn't lend itself well to uh, to open discussion because there's a lag waiting for people to uh, type in um, questions and comments. But we have had uh, uh, quite an active uh, and engaged group today, which is which has been really great. Um, I'm not seeing any additional questions at this time. Um, I want to uh, take a moment and thank our presenters today for being. Uh, not only giving uh, such a great and informative presentation, uh, but also for being so well prepared. I will say that uh, that Francis and Jim set a new bar in terms of uh, being well prepared, uh, really uh, being thoughtful in uh, in putting together the material, and also being really conscientious in leaving plenty of time, as you can see, for um, uh, for questions and discussion. So, on that note, I think I want to. Um, uh, thank our presenters, thank our extremely engaged audience, thank the Metadata Managers Focus Group for continuing to bring um, wonderful uh, works in progress webinar ideas to, um, to us for us to share with the broader OCLC Research Library Partnership. So Jim and Francis, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, and we'll return uh, 10 minutes to the rest of you and uh, this concludes today's webinar. Thanks, guys.